Hi, this is Eternal King bringing you another gaming video today. So today I wanted to look at Tango Gameworks. Um, if you don't know, Tango Gameworks was closed down by Bethesda uh, recently, along with Arcane Studios. And it was viewed, um, but you know, it was a decision from Microsoft that bought, you know, Bethesda the publisher and all the underlying studios. Anyway, so they closed down Tango Gameworks, so I wanted to look at The Evil Within 2. Um, if you don't know, The Evil Within 2 was one of the most re recent AAA, um, one of the most recent AAA survival horror franchise attempts. It is a totally unique IP that is separate from Resident Evil. No. No, this is not happening. And it's unfortunate that Tango was closed down because I would argue that The Evil Within is fantastic. Um, it's not a big looker. It's running on like old in, um, id tech engine, like old Doom tech essentially, but it doesn't matter. The game is exceptional. And it's worth mentioning because it was really the only competitor to something like Resident Evil. And again, it's Tango Gameworks and I wanted to look at their last you know, big game um, because they were closed down. People talked a lot in the games industry about... Um, uh, their indie outings, you know, they talked about like Ghostwire Tokyo. Um, Ghostwire Tokyo I actually really liked. Um, not as much as this game, but I really did enjoy Ghostwire Tokyo. And then of course they made an indie game that everybody loves, and people just kind of cited that as talking about the only outputs of the studio. They kind of forgot that Evil Within 2, this game, basically a major competitor to Resident Evil, was made by Tango Gameworks using id tech the id tech engine and honestly it's a fantastic survival horror game I'm coming, Lily. Just hold on. so yeah we're just going through the intro right now which is of course um, how uh, Sebastian thinks he loses here, his daughter I'm here. Yeah, again, the engine's a little old, the character models are a little plasticky, they don't look terrible, but they're also not brand new. Personally, like, you guys who are on my channel know, I'm not a big graphics guy. So even though this game is, you know, Devil May Cry 5 being RE Engine being 5 years old and still looking great, this is old id tech engine being, you know, I would probably say closer to 8 years old. And it's showing its age a bit more, but there's still things about it that I really like. Here now, damn it! You didn't find me because they didn't want you to. Calm down, Sebastian. You knew what was going to happen in that hospital, didn't you? Yeah, there are certain things about the character models that look plasticky. Um, but again, it, it, this game came out a while ago. But I did want to look at it because it was the best game made by Tango Gameworks before they were closed down. Like, yeah, that piece of paper there, it looks a little low resolution. Right, a little crispy, like, that's where you kind of see it. Where did you get this? Lily's still alive. Lily 
is dead. I read the police report. I was at her funeral. To be honest, Tango was amazing. History if we want to. Staging a death is child's play. Why would I come out of the shadows just to lie to you? Lily is alive. She's with us. But she's in danger. We need you to help save her. Save her? What have you done to her? Get your hands off me! See, even in terms of this cutscene, a lot of the staging is very well done. Like, the camera angle shifts and stuff like that. Even if, technically speaking, nothing about what you're seeing on screen is, like, the best-looking thing ever. The composition of the, of the cutscene, like, you call it, like, cinematography, where they're placing the, 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 the you know, cameras in the level editor, like, it, it looks like you're watching a movie, even though the graphics are aged. And you have things like resolution pop in that are inherent to the id tech engine. Um, a lot of like Unreal Engine 4 games had texture yeah, pop in. It was like pretty well known. You're awake. Good. Yeah. Great. Where are we? We're in one of our facilities. So this is the almighty Mobius, huh? Be careful about what you say. You don't know how powerful they are. Now, interestingly enough, because it's id tech engine, you can actually play the entire game in first person if you want. <laughs> At least your terrible sense of humor is still intact. Enough of this bullshit. Where's Lily? Patience. All your answers are right here. Yeah, see, now this looks really good. The Beacon Mental Hospital and Looks a little better than the bar scene. And fortunate setback. But we used a knowledge gain to build a new and vastly improved STEM system. What does this have to do with my daughter? Imagine it. Millions of minds connected together. Yeah, he's got a little bit of the doll hair thing going on. It looks like he's got plugs, you know? This machine, this miracle will allow our species to achieve greatness. We needed to start with a mind. And again, yeah, the to the texture popping thing was so rampant all through um, the uh, you know Unreal Engine 4 life cycle or just Western engines at the time. So again, id tech engine pretty commonly had texture popping. Your daughter is quite special. The most stable core candidate we've ever tested. Thanks to her, the new STEM has been a smashing success. I still really like this game. You know, I still li I like the way that it looks. I like the vibes from it. A little over a week ago. I think Tango Studios got closed down for no reason, in my opinion. Like, I think some executives looked at the, the at some numbers in a spreadsheet and they were like, they didn't even look at this. You take one look at this game and you're like, why would you close down this studio? This IP is awesome. IP standing for intellectual property. Think about this, Mr. Castellanos. I am providing you an opportunity. Not only to see your daughter again, but to save her life. Something you thought you failed to do before. You can save her, or let her die. your choice. Yeah, so what are your guys' thoughts so far? Do you feel that, you know, PS4 era games are just unplayable today since the PS5 came out? Do you think that Unreal Engine 4 is that much worse than Unreal Engine 5? I know you don't trust um, in RE Engine, we saw a little bit of stuff with the shadows. In this old id tech engine, we're seeing a little bit of texture pop in. A little bit of, you know, doll's hair on the men. But, like, for the most part, honestly, it doesn't look bad. It, it makes it very hard for me to justify, like, a generational leap between, you know... 
PS4, PS5, or Xbox One and Xbox Series S, which I have now, I don't notice a difference. And in fact, any game that you play on the Switch is going to have less, you know, processing power behind it than this. Um, I'm going to be honest. Like, uh, if you play a Switch game, they look amazing, they play well. Um, in terms of graphically, like, the graphics behind them, I would say that they're, like, behind Unreal Engine 4 in terms of visual fidelity. But, like, it doesn't matter. Um, what we're looking at right now is, like, an eight-year-old game. And there are certain things in the details that are problematic. But, you know... If every game that I get to play current generation is a remake of an old game, I would rather just go back and play new IPs, new ideas. So again, um, would I rather play The Evil Within 2 over RE4 Remake? Yeah, because strictly speaking, The Evil Within 2 is a newer game. Like again, I, I'm really hard, like I go pretty hard on Bethesda, but like... Arcane Studios and Tango Gameworks underneath them, they made some amazing games. Uh, right now we're doing the Liminal Space intro, which again, the Liminal Space intro for Evil Within 2 is like my favorite intro for any like game ever. Um, if you don't know, Liminal Space means being between two states. So when you transition into this digital matrix world, um, it's all liminal, right? Like it feels like an out-of-body experience. And it's so well done. And if you were to tell me that Bethesda published it, I wouldn't believe you. Now, if you were to tell me that Bethesda closed the studio recently, I would believe you. Um, which is what happened, unfortunately. But a little shout out to Tango Gameworks um, and Arcane Studios. Two of the best game development studios available. And uh, pretty happy to be running through the Evil Within 2 with you guys just to show off. Um, showing off some of the good old stuff. Old, but also newer than every remake that's coming out right now. Like, this is newer than Silent Hill 2 Remake. This is newer than RE4 Remake. This is newer than Dead Rising Remake. Um, not newer visually, but it's newer conceptually, um, which is what matters more to me. Yeah. So much cool stuff happening with this intro. We've gone from like first person to third person. This is so cool. It actually reminds me a little of the new indie game pools. Like there's a lot of like back rooms and liminal space stuff happening in the survival horror scene right now for games that cost like five or ten dollars a piece. Here we are with a triple A title that did all this liminal space stuff long before the indie scene. Um, and it was in a Bethesda published game. So again, if you're a big money game executive, um, go buy all the staff from Tango Gameworks. They're amazing. Just like every single person that was in Tango Gameworks, go buy them up, give them their jobs back, and get them working on Evil Within 3. We're just going to skip this little chat. Basically explaining that this office of Sebastian is not a real office. It's a liminal space constructed from his memories. I don't ever remember owning a cat. Now, once you get in-game, it looks a little crispier. I'm not going to lie. Like, obviously, you had the pre-rendered cutscenes. That was kind of... Looks very smooth and very nice. You get in-game, it looks a little crispier. Um, a tiny bit. But it is an old game, right? But artistically, stylistically, um, it has so much to offer. Kidman, you there? Always. You wouldn't have told me about Lily if your damn machine didn't go on the fritz. I would have spent the rest of my life mourning her and you wouldn't have cared. So you're free to explore this liminal office space of yours and come back to it in between like levels and objectives. Um, and of course, in this space, you can upgrade your abilities, you can upgrade your weapons and do all that stuff. Um, we are playing on uh, survival mode, so we can't do that. Um, it basically makes it like a Resident Evil title where you can't upgrade your abilities 
and ammo is you know more limited and you can't upgrade your weapons and you have limited saves slots basically um, but that's an optional difficulty you don't really have to do that 2017 um, so again similar to Devil May Cry 5 the game we looked at uh, this is a five-year-old title but it is a five-year-old title that also is simultaneously a new IP and is therefore more valuable to me than remaking an old IP. Um, I would much rather see The Evil Within 3 than I would like to see, you know, five more Resident Evil remakes um, before, you know, the end of the decade. But uh, that was the intro for The Evil Within. Um, I just wanted to pour one out for Tango Gameworks. Um, hope you had fun kind of delving into five-year-old id tech um, energy. Uh, I think it looks a little worse than RE Engine. Like, we did the side-by-side -side comparison. Go to my other video on DMC5. I think that the RE Engine aged better um, and continues to age better than id Tech software um, and id Tech Engine because, again, you have that pop-in and the doll hair and a couple things that stand out. But regardless, um, it's, still, it's still a looker, you know, five years on. Um, and, yeah, Tango Gameworks, why were you closed down? I want the evil within three. You guys are awesome. Um, hope you're all landing on your feet and uh, take care.